In the previous part of the section, we saw that there are many ways for a droplet to react upon impact with a surface. We broadly connected the behaviours of bouncing to superhydrophobic surfaces, pinning to hydrophobic surfaces, and spreading for hydrophilic surfaces. In this section, we will see examples of how droplet impact is controlled to give the desired impact. Droplet impact has a number of controlling factors, including drop velocity, surface roughness, and surface free energy. Here are some images of droplets that have been captured with high-speed cameras. A microscale structured surface was used in these tests. In the images, the impact velocity has been varied. At low speed, we see the non-bouncing case. However, at higher speed, there are a number of different outcomes, as the droplet has more energy. In the cases of partial rebound and the sticky vibrating ball, we see how pinning from the surface hinders the droplet's ability to rebound completely. In this clip, water is released onto a sample slide which is partly superhydrophobic. The remainder of the slide is less rough and just hydrophobic. When the slide is tilted, the droplets roll easily down the superhydrophobic surface until becoming pinned in the hydrophobic region. This demonstrates the transition from the Cassie-Baxter to a Wenzel state and is a result of differences in the surface roughness. If we tilt the slide the other way so that the drop lands on the hydrophobic region, the difference between a pinned and unpinned droplet is clearly illustrated. Here, the surface roughness has shown to be a controlling factor in the behaviour of the drop. This result shows that a surface can be manipulated to favour one type of impact over another. If we want water to bounce and roll off a surface, we can attach hydrophobic groups to a surface and treat the surface to have multiple scales of roughness. However, if we want to trap water droplets, we can attach hydrophobic groups to a surface, but only treat with a single scale roughness to obtain a less hydrophobic Wenzel surface. The scale of surface roughness has an effect on the droplet impact for high velocity splashes. For surfaces of different scale roughness, for example, nanoscale versus microscale roughness, the splashing on the surface with the smaller scale roughness will be more violent and pronounced. Here we see the splash of water onto a surface with nanoscale roughness. The original droplet is split into several smaller satellite drops, which disperse without structure. This is caused by the carbon nanofiber surface, which is highly unstructured and forms a composite Cassie-Baxter surface with the droplet upon impact. As a result, there is no pinning and the droplets are free to bounce and disperse randomly. Here we see a microscale rough surface forming a much more structured fountain-like splash. Part of the droplet remains in the same position as where it first hits the surface throughout the splash. This pinning shows that the surface is in a Wenzel regime and causes the splash to be in the vertical direction, much more controlled than for the nanofiber Cassie-Baxter surface. Uncontrolled spreading and splashing is often undesirable, for example in inkjet printing. Printing with consistency and control is key to obtaining the best quality results. Understanding how and why a droplet impacts the surface the way that it does leads to improved quality of print, as adjustments to the ink or substrate can be made. In recent times, a focus of research has been on the development of printable electronics, where conductive materials are printed on regular materials like textiles. One such application is organic photovoltaic cells. Organic solar cells are made from conductive polymers and provide an alternative to traditional silicon solar cells. Organic solar cells are flexible and lightweight, and in some cases, semi-transparent. To make the cells, the conductive polymer substrates are deposited onto a surface, often using inkjet printing technology. When printing the conductive material, we want to have a continuous straight line to avoid discontinuities and inconsistencies in the printing, which can have a big impact on the performance of the cell, we need consistent spreading of the droplets. From droplet impact analysis, the polymer solvent liquid to be deposited can be fine-tuned. Properties like the viscosity, surface free energy and hence wettability can be altered by changing concentrations of the various components in the mixture in order to achieve the best deposition. Droplet impact is important in crop spraying, where the spray must be designed to get to the desired part of the plant. For example, if a spray needs to reach the soil, the composition of the spray is altered so that the droplet will roll off the leaves towards the soil. 
Conversely, if the spray is for the leaves, the spray can be modified so that spreading on the leaves is favoured. In spray cooling, water is divided into fine droplets, fired at hot surfaces, upon which they evaporate, transferring heat away from the surface. Spray cooling is very sensitive to a number of droplet impact parameters, such as impact velocity and angle, surface roughness and droplet size. By controlling the droplet impact, the efficiency of cooling can be maximised. In this section, we have discussed the effects of different impact parameters. We have also seen why it is important to control these parameters in the cases of some real-world applications, such as crop spraying and in the printing and technology industries.